We not only have to be capable of determining who is our immediate enemy, but we have to be capable of taking advantage of all the contradictions that occur between enemies, stimulating those contradictions where possible, because what we have to do is to concentrate our fire on the principal enemy. We have spoken of enemy of principal enemy, of taking advantage of the contradictions in the midst of the enemy. But we have not spoken yet about allies, which we need in order to concentrate the maximum forces against our immediate enemy. It is fundamental error to think that we can make the revolution alone. Revolutionaries alone cannot make a revolution. And when does this idea arise, generally does not come up when we are a small group, in an obvious minority, because it is clear that in those conditions we cannot win, but certainly when we are a majority. For example, we have the case of what happened in Bolivia. After a very fierce struggle against separatisms of the region, the opposition of the Senate and a series of actions of the opposition forces, the forces that support the government succeed in winning thanks to the mobilization of the people. After that, Evo succeeded in winning the referendum. The Constituent Assembly was won and the presidential election were won with a wide margin. Then, according to my analysis, an overestimation of their own forces happened and sectarianism emerged among the comrades of the mass. They thought they were so good that they did not need to include others. I believe that was a major error. I'm going to try to illustrate that idea. If revolutionaries alone are those who can do what is needed, it seems obvious that they will go more quickly. But it results that like a locomotive, if the cars are disconnected and remain behind, clearly the locomotive without cars goes forward much more quickly. But the problem is that the revolution has to arrive with all the cars, not just with a locomotive. In this case, with all the people, not only with the revolutionaries. Ahora, ¿cómo trabajar para consolidar las alianzas con otros? Now, how do we work to consolidate alliance with others? For that, it's very important to take into account propaganda, action, and agitation. In what sense propaganda? When you make an alliance with someone who you do not agree with on everything, emphasize what you share, or you can emphasize what you do not share. President Chavez himself has established alliances with sectors of the middle bourgeoisie, with a group of business people. So it is clear that he will emphasize the good character of these business people. He will say that those business people are willing to collaborate to create jobs, that they are willing to give work to the people, etc. He will not refer to the fact that these business people are exploiters. It is not that those people stop being capitalists. They continue being capitalists. What happens is that propaganda accentuates those things that are positive for the process. As for action, when those sectors that are not ours are attacked by conservative forces because they are supporting us, we should act in solidarity with them. And in regard, in regard to agitation, we have to expose everything the enemy does that are things rejected by those sectors allies to us. 
For example, the Venezuelan Catholic Church, which defends students on hunger strike against Chavez, but is not worried enough to give shelter to victims of a storm. The idea is that our temporary allies see the contradictions they have with the more conservative sectors and the affinities they have with us. Now, in alliances, we must distinguish between agreements and compromises. We can make agreements without anybody renouncing to their own objectives. For example, in the case of the struggle against Batista, bourgeois sector could support the guerrillas, giving them food for, f to succeed in assaulting a barrack. There, then, is an agreement the bourgeois sectors will feed them, and in doing so, they are not renouncing anything. Simply, it's an act of collaboration. But there are other alliances that imply compromises. That is to say, to renounce to part of our own demands to be able to do agreements with other forces. So, there are comrades of the most radical left who says that they will not accept any compromise, that doing so means to be reformist, not being revolutionary or being a traitor to the revolution. But Lenin strongly insisted that one has to understand that one must accept compromises. But on this issue, I want to speak to you in a separate session.